Hey, this is Brian at BuzzGunShop.com. I'm here today with Gurney, and that's a name you may recognize if you've been to our website. There's a tab that says Trade with Gurney. Uh, people don't realize necessarily that a large percentage, a significant percentage of our inventory are trade guns, yes? Yes. On an average day, how many? Gurney is the one who takes care of the trade guns. Average day, how many? 20 to 30. Okay. So if you go to the, if someone has a firearm they want to trade, and they trade with Gurney, they hit the tab, where does that, how does that process start? Um, it opens up uh, a form, basically, that asks for things such as make, model, caliber, accessories that are included. Okay. Uh, they fill that out and submit it. Uh, and hopefully I get enough information to know exactly what they've got. I may go back and forth with them a little bit, getting okay. clarification. That was my next question. Are there are things that you will want to know, for example, what would what, what be some of the things you would want to know before you gave them a price? Definitely. What I need to know is make, model, caliber, uh, if there's any different features. Uh, for instance, a shotgun can have a variety of barrel lengths. Okay. Um, I need to know specifically what's included with it. Uh, sometimes Perhaps a model's been around for years and years. Uh, I'll need to know, is it a vintage one or is it one of the newer ones? Okay. Uh, production changes over the years, um, do, things like that. Do things like having the original box and paperwork, does that add value to the gun? Most of the time it does, and that's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. But usually, yes, especially if we've got, uh, for instance, handguns that have a spot for the gun, the extra magazines, and we can keep it packaged and marketed all together. That definitely adds value. Okay, okay. Um, you are often in, you're thrust into a difficult role. Yes, because, yes, yes. Because you cannot always give someone the price they're looking to get out of a firearm. Right. You can't do it. Talk a little bit about that. Well, we try to be as fair as possible. Uh, some guns are easier to sell than others. Um, if it's uh, a common gun that we have a lot of experience with, if it's a popular model, uh, there's a little more... Margin for error, I'm not as nervous, you know, uh, we may not make as much on it, but if we move it quick, quicker, okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, if it's something odd or uh, depending on the, the cost of it, um, I have to be a little careful. Um, uh, the other thing is changes in the market. You never know what's going to happen from one day to the other. Uh, by the time, I've actually had guns that I've bought at a certain price to sell at a certain price, and by the time the order came in, uh, we process, processed it. Uh, the distributors or manufacturers that drop the price okay. on it. So, got to have a little room for safety. We're not buying these guns because we want to have these guns. Right, right. So, so we're not buying them to keep. We can't pay what they're worth. We, we have to buy them less than that so we can mark them up and sell them. We're, uh, our, 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 our purpose here is to sell them. Yes. Okay. We try. So, you can't always give someone the price that they, they are looking for. Now, that brings up another interesting question. That there are some misconceptions about what adds value to a gun, and I'll give you the classic, and you're going to wince, is if I tell you, but this belonged to my grandfather. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, we're buying the gun, not the story, definitely. <laughs> and uh, you know, and Unless your grandfather was Douglas MacArthur. Right, right, perhaps. Perhaps. perhaps, perhaps. We'll work with that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but right, the, the sentimental value, we can't pay for that. Now, if it's uh, a classic or an antique, uh, something that's desirable, you know, because it's older, then, well, look into that. Okay. Uh, but, but yeah, not the story. Now, that, that takes us to another one. I know this is, this is your, your, uh, your commemorative editions. Is worth the money? Is good investment, bad investment? Commemoratives can be really tough depending. Uh, if they have a universal appeal, like a John Wayne commemorative or a Buffalo Bill uh, or certain famous events in history, those can be desirable. But if it's a very small uh, group or event, then that a lot of times actually lowers the value. Uh, Colt Single Action Armies are one of the, the best examples. Um, there are some very odd commemoratives done over the years uh, that only appeal to a very small region or group of people, and some of those are actually worth less than just a standard Colt Single Action. So you are hesitant to, to do trading on a commemorative, unless it's a, a John Wayne, something like that. Right, right. Uh, and we are lucky since that we list and sell guns nationwide, um, something that's associated with a different state, we're going to have trouble selling it in Kentucky, except to maybe a specific collector that wants all the models. Sure. But once we put it online, we can reach people in that state. Uh, so that does help. Okay. I, okay, that does make sense. All right, what are you not looking for? Well, uh, we pretty much want anything uh, that we can resell. 
Um, but we don't want anything in poor condition uh, with our volume of trades, trade requests, uh, and, and just all that's coming and going. Uh, we don't have time to track down parts. Uh, we don't want to send it off to have it fixed. Uh, we need guns. I prefer them in complete original condition. Uh, we can't do a lot with things that are modified because of okay. you know, liability reasons or, or uh, things that have been you know, home built. Well, that's exactly the point I wanted to make. Somebody comes into the retail store with an AR and it's they built it. Do we want that? Generally not. We uh, have to stay away from that. Uh, just like I said, because of liability, warranty concerns, yeah. uh, we don't know. It doesn't have a, a company name attached to it that we can send it to for help or repairs okay. if there's an issue down the road. And we don't know if this person knew what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's always busy. All right, so there's that. We're not looking for anything that's broken, missing components. Um, if something's in very, very bad shape, we're not interested um, because we are in business to make money. Right. All right, so you can trade online, but that's not your only option. No, we have three retail stores in Lexington, Kentucky, Sevierville, Tennessee, and we also have Uncle Lee's in Greenville, Kentucky. And for our local customers, feel free to take your gun or guns by there for an appraisal, a trade offer. Uh, or to see if they want to purchase them, and that actually works yeah. really good. You're in person, we can see the gun, uh, and let you know, usually within a few minutes. All right. Now, you've seen a lot of guns come through the door, but there's one I want, I, I just love the story. Would you please tell the, the story? Uh, my favorite one by far, and uh, you really never know what's going to show up uh, <laughs> any day. Um, and this was not initially uh, one that was brought to us to trade in, but one of our trainers was working with a gentleman, who said that he had an old gun that he wanted to be inspected to see if it was safe to shoot. Uh, didn't even know really what it was. And so our trainer looked at it and thought he would bring it to me to look at. And uh, didn't, at first, you know, I was just sitting there working and I look up and it was an old Smith & Wesson revolver. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, it gets better. Yeah. When I, uh, when I opened the cylinder, uh, I saw something that made my heart stop. Um, it said REG. And uh, I got really excited, started doing some research, and come to find out, it was a registered Magnum that was originally purchased, we believe in the 1930s, yep. by this gentleman's father, who was a competitive shooter, did like Camp Perry mat uh, matches, and this gun was in amazing condition for its age. Uh, all original, had not been messed with, modified. I'd say the gun was probably in 95% condition. I mean, better than a lot of Easily newer worth guns. $100, $200. <laughs> yeah, More I was like... Yeah, I, I was so excited to get to see that. Uh, and then we went and pulled the gentleman aside in private because it was so valuable. We didn't want people to know what he had. And we let him know what he had. <laughs> um, and uh, he actually offered to let me shoot it. <laughs> which, unfortunately, I turned down because I, I didn't want to do that to, to this. But uh, that was by far my favorite. And yeah. I'd love to have something like that walk in again. Oh, yeah. Now, you've also had some on the other end of the spectrum. I have. I would say one of the biggest tragedies, uh, a gun was brought in uh, that was in amazing condition. It was an all-original World War II era Remington Rand that had virtually no wear. No parts had been changed. The gun had not seen any action, really. Uh, however, whoever had taken it from the military, uh, I guess thinking that it would keep them out of trouble if they got caught with it later, uh, had completely... Um, defaced the serial number. So a relative ended up with the gun uh, and knowing that, that this was illegal contacted the ATF and they allowed a new serial number to be issued. Um, so the gun was still just in amazing condition except for uh, the way the, the old serial number had been ground off and the new one inscribed. Gun you were easily cut in half. Oh, it was just, it's really a shame because yeah. there's probably no telling how few examples left in that condition now. So there's always something coming in the door. In any case, uh, go online, click the Trade with Gurney tab, or stop into one of our stores. Brian here with Gurney at Bud's in Lexington. Thank you for your time. I Thank appreciate you, Brian. it. Thank you.